Hello, my name is Chad Kurdi, and I'm an electrical instructor in the electrical department at Dunwoody College of Technology. Today, uh, we would like to go over part one of introduction to the National Electric Code based on 2011 edition. Our class for the day would be an introduction to the National Electric Code part one. To help us with this, I do have with me National Electric Code 2011 edition, and also I do have a PDF file of the National Electric Code that we're going to go through. Um, the first thing I want to start with this introduction is talk a little bit about the history of the National Electric Code, and then I would like to go over the table of contents of the National Electric Code and the application. Where does the National Electric Code apply? And we, we will be moving on into the definitions of uh, terminology that we use in the National Electric Code. Uh, National Electric Code, and I want to help go through over here uh, all the way to this icon here. National Electric Code is published by um, National Fire Protection Association. The first edition ever adopted by the fire, uh, Nas National Fire Protection Association was in 1897. Since 1897 all the way to uh, 2008 and now coming to 2011, every three years, almost every three years, we have been getting a new version of the National Electric Code. And as I mentioned, National Electric Code is the most commonly used standard in um, the continental United States and other states and other countries even in the world. Um, so the first ever to be adopted National Electric Code copy was in 1897. And today we will be going over uh, NEC 2011 introduction. To help us with this introduction, um, I would like to go over the table of contents and highlight certain very important topics, very important topics um, to understand the National Electric Code. The first topic that we need to under understand when it comes to the National Electric Code is the introduction, Article, article, um, article 900. Article 900 will tell you where does the National Electric Code apply and which installation is required to adhere to the rules of the National Electric Code and which installation does not. So that's a very, very important topic to talk about. The second topic that we will be talking about is definitions. As you move through the National Electric Code, you will be introduced to equipment grounding conductor, grounded conductor, ungrounded conductor, service, disconnects. And all these definitions are identified in Article 8, uh, 100. So it's very, very important before you move into the National Electric Code is to spend some time understanding the terminology that we use in the NEC code book, which all of them are in the definitions of um, um, Article 100. The second topic that we will be talking about, very important, is requirement for electrical installation. As you can see from the table of contents, if, we, if you're dealing with anything 600 volt or less, there's some requirement. If you go to the high voltage, there is other requirement. So this, is, this will tell you a lot of um, information about how do you install the electrical equipment? How far do you have to keep clearances in the front of a 4,000 amp switch gear uh, in order for the electrician to work safely around and in front of these equipments? Dedicated space for the equipments. We need to make sure that we give enough dedicated space for the electricians to bring their conduits down into the system. So this is very, very important topic that we will be talking about. Um, moving on into chapter two, uh, so that will be chapter one. The first information will be in chapter one. The second information, chapter two. Chapter two is extremely important. Um, everything that we wire, we protect the conductors, we wire the conduit system, what type of wiring can I use for certain application, everything is gonna be um, in chapter two, especially the overcurrent protection device. So we will spend some time identifying Identifying the conductors, um, what color conductor do I need for ungrounded conductor, for grounded conductor, for grounding conductor. All these identification of conductor you're going to be finding it in Article 200. 
Then we move into a different topic, which is brand circuits. Brand circuits are extremely important when it comes to lighting brand circuits, receptacle brand circuits, dedicated circuits. All this information, what's the largest brand circuit that, that I can pull out of a panel? All this information is going to be found in um, Article 210, brand circuits. So we'll be talking about this one. Uh, feeders, feeders uh, 215 talks about feeders. Feeders are conductors and conduits right between two panels, bringing from panel A, 4,000 amp, into panel B, uh, 2,000 amp. That will be a feeder. How do you size a feeder? How do you protect the feeder with overcompetition device? So a lot of information will be in... Uh, in 215. Very, very important topic to talk about brand circuits and feeders. Brand circuits and feeders. So these are extremely imp important topics um, to highlight. Uh, moving on to another very important topic in understanding the NDC code book after you do the feeders and the brand circuits. After you do the feeders and the brand circuits uh, would be feeders and brand circuits would be, um, so we, we got our feeders, we got our brand circuits. Calculation, Article 220, how do I calculate the feeder, the service, and the brand circuit for a building? If you have a 10,000 square foot building, commercial building, how do you calculate the service that's coming to this building, the brand circuits in this building, as well as the feeders in between the panels in the building? All this information, the volt ampere square foot, the allowance for motor, the allowance for HVAC equipment, the allowance for lights, the derating for ranges and so forth, will be included directly into Article uh, 220, completely into Article 220. So brand circuit calculation right here, as well as the feeder calculation, extremely, extremely important when it comes to sizing equipment for the electrical, um, for the electrical service and panels. Uh, moving on from feeders, brand circuits, we talked about brand circuits, feeders. A uh, very important topic is services, bringing the power from the electrical utility into your um, 100,000 square foot building. You need to be able to size the conductor, the power conductor coming to your building. All the information that you need about overhead service conductor, underground service conductor, service, uh, service entrance conductor. Um, service equipment, service disconnect means. These are extremely, extremely important topics that um, as you move through the NEC code book has to be to completely understand, um, understand these topics. So that's, that's another topic very, very important as you bring your, um, and I, if I want to summarize this one, if you bring, if your power line is coming from over here and you bring from your, and your building is right in here, and you're gonna bring your conductors all the way to the building, all the way to, to my building over here. So these are your conductors. This, these are gonna be overhead service conductor. These are your overhead service conductor. You're gonna bring your conductors into a disconnect, a disconnect down over here, and from the disconnect, you're gonna bring it right into your panel. So that will be your service entrance, um, service entrance conductors. These are conductors right in here. Um, you're going to have service entrance equipment. This will be the equipment in here and service entrance disconnect right in here. So these are topics from bringing the power directly from the power lines right through the meter and the disconnect into the service entrance equipment inside your building. Very, very important topics, how to size them um, and how to, um, how to size them and how to locate them and requirement for each and every one of them. So these are topics, very, as I said, very important topics to, to go through. Um, over the second uh, important, um, very, very important topic that you have to be aware of is overcurrent protection device. Every time we have a conductor that needs to carry a load, you need an overcurrent protection device. For example, if I have a, a 200 amp, a 200 amp panel, a feeder feeding a panel right in here, this is my 200 amp panel. 200 amp panel. My 200 amp panel must be protected by a 200 amp circuit breaker and wired through a conductor. Through a conductor that could be a feeder, a branch circuit, in this case a feeder or a service, a feeder or a service. So the conductors as well as the panel must have um, an overcurrent protection device that sized dry to protect the panel as well as, as the conductors, as well as the conductors. So that's the topic of overcurrent protection device. 
is very important topic to, um, to as we size, to go over. Uh, another important topic that we, we do is grounding. Grounding, as we bring the service entrance conductors, the branch circuits, the feeders, all these terminology that we throw, you need to provide a grounding conductor, equipment grounding conductor, electrode grounding conductor, bonding conductor. All these terminology that we throw at the definition of all these terminology is going to be right in Article 250, grounding and bonding. Very, very important topic to talk about grounding and bonding. Grounding the system. Is the system grounded or not? If it's a Y system or a delta system or single phase system, we're going to be grounding it. A grounding electrode conductor, um, very important. Equipment grounding conductor, equipment grounding conductor topic, extremely, extremely important. Um, so these are between the system grounded, uh, grounding electrode conductor um, into the equipment grounding conductor, very important topics in the grounding that you have to be aware of. We size the grounding um, electrode conductor different than we size the equipment grounding conductor, and we will be touching on that uh, later on. A couple of other topics, very important, not for this introduction, but, but later on as uh, surge protectors and, and so forth. Um, moving on to chapter three, moving on to chapter three, every approved wiring methods that we use um, in the United States is in chapter three. How can I wire these lights? How can I wire the receptacles around in this room? There is close to 40 to 50 ways of wiring different lights and different receptacles based on are you using conduits, um, flexible conduits, are you using non-flexible conduits, are you using cables, bus ducts? So all this information, you're gonna find it directly in chapter three, which chapter three that talks about wiring methods and material, wiring methods and material. Very, very important topic. Um, so wiring methods and material. First of the wiring methods, there's some requirement on the wires that you can use. And then it moves us directly into conductors for general use. Can I use a barb wire to wire um, um, uh, a motor or wire a light? Of course not, because the barb wires are not listed in Article 310. How do I know that I cannot use a steel conduit to carry the current for me to uh, a pump, a swimming pool pump, because the steel conduits are not listed as a wiring conductor. They're not listed as a wiring conductor. So all this information, very, very important. You're going to find it directly from Article 310 in Chapter, in chapter 3. Um, chapter 3, there is um, a table later on that we're going to be using 310.15B16. 310.15B16 is a very important table that tells you if I have a conductor number 14, how much current can a number 14 conductor carry? A number 14 conductor carry. All this information, you're going to find it in table 310.15. Uh, how do I size uh, a 2,000 amp um, feeder to uh, conductors for, for, uh, for a service or a panel? All this information is going to be found in table 310.15 B16. B16. Um, so that's very important information. You're going to find 310.16, and we will be covering it. Uh, later and looking at it and taking some examples of how to use this table. 